Hi, let's continue our adventures in SQL injection. In this lecture, we are going to try an exploitation technique called the union select. Union is an operator in SQL languages which allows two select statements to be combined and return only one resulting table. So basically, the return table will first contain the results of the first select and then at the end, the results of the second select. Because of that, a really important thing is that both select statements have to result in the same number of uh, columns. So if the first one returns three columns, then the second one also have to, to return three columns so that you can combine it into one table. But let's see an example. So let's log on to the target machine. Yeah, if I knew the password. And I will change to root. And then I will open the MySQL console. So the username is root. And we will add the password. So the password is my lowercase and then SQL uppercase and PW lowercase. So we are now here at the uh, MySQL console. So we say that we want to use the VPDB, which stands for WordPress database. Then for instance, show tables. So these are the tables for the person of interest application. So let's do a query, select ID post title po post date and from the vpdb dot vp post so we are just requesting these rows from the posts table as you can see we get back the table there is a ID column, post title column, and post date column. Let's do another request. Select and user login, user email, and uh, display name from vpdb.vp users. So we are requesting this, these, these columns from the VP users table. Let's see. There we get our two users. And uh, these are the three columns. Now we want to combine these two requests to get the results of both requests, but as one table. So first, we are going to take the first request. And instead of closing it, we'll continue with union All select and then comes the rest of the second request right so basically we are creating one select query from two but important that they have to have the same number of columns which is all right in this case because both of them have three columns. Now let's see. Yes, you could see first it starts with the results of the first select query. And then here it continues with the results of the second select query. But why is this interesting for us? In a SQL injection, you can only manipulate the request you are injecting into. And usually you can only inject into the very close. So for instance, if we say here, where, whatever. So usually you, cannot, you can inject in this where close. So you, can, you cannot really tell from which table you want data. So with a simple SQL injection, you are limited to the data which is in the table what the original request uses. So if you want access to other tables, we need to execute another query and somehow include its output in the output of the original request so that we see that on the website. 
Now, the, the union operator allows us to do exactly this, to combine to select statement and return both of their results in one table. But when one tries to use a union in an, in an injection, then the first question is always how many columns the select query has. This is all obvious when all query data is sent back to the user, but sometimes the application queries more data what actually he shows to the user, like it, it queries four, five columns, but in the resulting table on the website, you can only see three columns. But we can, we can figure this out easily. Let's go back to our burp. I still have my request here with the injection. That's what I want to develop further. Here in the terminal, I will exit this and tail the log file so that we actually see the request, the select queries we are sending. Uh, log MySQL. Yes. So you want to change only this part. Instead of the OR, we add the union all select. Oh, I uh, the spaces has to be replaced with plus. And I will just add the number one because now we just want to find out how many columns the first statement has. And with this, we are guessing that it, it has just one column, not with the number, but with the number of columns here in the second select. But we will see that in a minute. So let's do it. And as you could see, it didn't return anything, probably because the number of columns is different in the two, the two statements. Let's check it in the MySQL log. You could see that the first statement, which is built in, has three columns. And in the union statement, we only had one. So because of that, it cannot return the resulting table. But you can brute force this really easily. You just always add another column. It doesn't really matter what's the, what's the string here. The important is the number here, uh, is the number of columns. So I test for two, still nothing. And then I test for three, and then we got results. But we already know that, that the, the original, or the first statement has three columns. So we also have to have three columns here. Now that we are getting back data, we actually have a fresh select statement in our hands. So we can start extracting data from the database. So for instance, we could do things like use the variables in the database. This is a MySQL uh, variable to ask for the version number. And if you scroll down at the end, you see the results of the second statement. Here are just these two strings, which we use the number one and number two. Let's just copy it there. And then here is the value of the version variable. So we found out the version of the database, which can be good if we want to attack the, or exploit the database directly, or want to do a privilege escalation or something like that. We can also, use a database functions here, like asking for the current user. Go, and then when you scroll down, at the end, as a last parameter, you will see, I'm sorry to read a bit, that it's root localhost. So that's the user what the web application is using to communicate with the database which is actually already a finding what you can put in your report. So MySQL can handle many databases, even for different applications. And each of them should have their own user so that the user of one database cannot access the user of the other database. Like on this server, there are two applications running, the voice of the emperor and the person of interest. And uh, the fact that the person of interest is using the user root, which probably has access to all databases, that means that if you find vulnerability in the person of interest, then you can access the data of the voice of the emperor. 
That could be, for instance, a problem if you're hosting your server somewhere in the cloud where they are hosting different servers on one machine. And then if some, if one application gets hacked, then your application can be hacked as well. So, but now let's get, let's try to get something more. So let's try host user uh, password from mysql.user. So with this query, we want to dump the available users and passwords from of the MySQL database itself. So the server and go. And at the end, you could see that for localhost, there is a root and this is its password hash. And there is for the target machine, so that's the host name, there is again a root and that's the password hash, etc. What haven't we seen before? Oh yeah, there is a there is a user called Encore user, and then the password hash. And there is a VP user and the password hash. So basically, the Encore CMS, which is the voice of the emperor, has its own user. And actually, the we WordPress has its own user as well. Just for some reason, it's not used. Into instead of that, the root user is used to connect to the database. So for instance, after this attack, you can take these password hashes and start uh, cracking them by brute forcing. We are not going to do that right now, uh, but it could be a good exercise for you. So basically, the, the union select is a great way to extract data out from the, from the database uh, because you can then query other tables, even the uh, tables of the uh, database user. Of course, it's de it depends on which user is the application using to connect to the database because that's going to limit your possibilities. As an exercise, what you can do is try to create a, a union select injection to find the users of the Encore CMS database. So try to dump the users and password hashes from the, for the Encore CMS. If you're finished, then I will see you in the next lecture. Bye.